Assalamualaikum. For the past 10 years, we've been trying to establish a mosque in our local um, community. So far, our local mosque is 20 minutes to 30 minutes away. And what we have right now is a house that's right next to two very prominent Trump supporters. And what the young generation is trying to say to the immigrants that lead the mosque, by the way, my dad is the president of the mosque as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. They all are saying that, well, the young people are saying, let's reach out to the news media and say that, why can't we establish a mosque? Why is it that there's so many churches right next to us, and we can't establish this so that we don't have to drive 30 minutes to the next mosque? And all of our parents and uncles and aunties are saying, no, 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 let's not draw attention. Let's not bring into the local news that we're trying to start something. What if they think otherwise? And um, take us. That those people are against the mosque? Yeah. Yeah. So they don't want to draw attention. Let's just try to fill out the paperwork, which we've done 10 times already, and try to establish our uh, mosque. So what would you say to, uh, to combat these immigrant parents and uncles that think that they don't want to draw attention and that it wouldn't be good to draw attention? Or should we just bulldoze them and then take <laughs> affirmative action? <laughs> OK. So. <laughs> First of all, I understand why a lot of the older generation operates in that mentality. And I understand where they're coming from. You know, they think about the safety of our community. I get it. But there's something more important than what we think. It's the law, right? We have every right as Muslims to build houses of worship. I don't care if the devil is your next door neighbor, right? So, so what, I, what I suggest is that if there is opposition to the mosque, like if you said you filled out the paperwork and it's still not going through because there's some sort of opposition. So there's a difference between you don't want to bring attention if you just started the process and you just know these people are Trump supporters, but there hasn't been some sort of interaction between you and them. I understand what the aunties and uncles are saying. But if you've already applied and you feel like there's some sort of a group of people working against the building of your mosque, right, and that those people are in opposition, then yes. The time is now, especially in a time where there is a lot of solidarity with Muslims, maybe not in your direct community, but on a national level, for us to help you bring attention to that cause to say, this is a land of religious freedom. We are Muslims and follow a religion. So this constitution protects us and we are to build a mosque wherever we are permitted to build a mosque because that is absolutely our right. So the messaging could be different depending on how you're messaging in a place like Wilmington, Delaware. So for example, we would need to find some Christian pastors, maybe some rabbis to bring along and build that relationship. So it's not just us Muslims standing up against Trump supporters, right? But us saying, we, the Muslims and our friends, are standing up and saying, we will build this mosque right here between these two houses because it's our right to do that. So all I'm saying is that there are strategic ways to do that, that cater to the urgency that the young people want to be able to say, this is a problem and we want to bring light to it. And also to cater to the elders who don't want to make a big dramatic story. But when you bring our friends in and other allies come and African American non-Muslims come and, and, and pastors from other communities come, guess what happens? The story becomes a beautiful story of solidarity and unity versus a story of tension between us and the Trump supporters. You get what I'm saying? It's about strategy. So your story reminds me a lot about another story, um, another masjid that was having a very similar problem. And this masjid was based in Bayonne, New Jersey. Um, and it, it made national news because of the amount of opposition that it was going through. So this, this masjid, they bought the land for this masjid like a ridiculous amount of time ago, I'm gonna say like five years or so. And the Muslims there pray in a basement of a building and it's just it's a terrible building it's not in the greatest condition and it's just unsanitary and it was just horrible and this is what they've been doing for a very long time and a couple of weeks ago they had like a local council and they were meeting 
the people who opposed the building of this masjid and the people who wanted to build this masjid to the engineers and the construction, um, the architects that were building this mosque. And the amount of people that came out in opposition was just crazy. And their, their reasoning, they were saying, we don't want to build this masjid because of like traffic violations, it's going to bring too many people, something of that sort, right? And there could be a legitimacy to that, but like we, we don't know what their intentions are. And the Muslims, it came the time for Asha prayer, and they started praying Asha in, in the back of this room. And then so a group of conservative Christians started praying louder to drown out the Muslims. And that really set the stage that, okay, maybe this is not about a traffic violation, that there are some intentions here that may be a little malice. So I would say, and this could be the concern of, of the elders and, and your dad. So I would confront the elders and ask them, okay, what is the worst case scenario in your mind? Like, why don't you want the attention? And if they say, well, we don't, we don't have funding, or we, we're afraid it's going to affect our funding, right? There were so many masajid within the past year or two that we either vandalized or burned down that just set up a simple GoFundMe link. And the outpouring support that it got, and it was built from these masajid and they got more money to help fund this masjid. If it's a fear of safety of opposition like this, this one in Bayonne, this Bayonne mosque, it, the situation reached national news. And then people came out in support of them. And that's how the opposition worked against them. So when you're trying to strategize, like Linda said, try to find out why exactly do they not want this to happen? Why don't they want this opposition? And I would say even connect with the people from the Bayonne Mosque, people in other communities who have gone through similar situations, and then we can just learn from one another. Because sometimes it's not about attention. Because you can get a national attention. You can bring in the local media and the national media, and people just say, oh my god, this is horrible, this is not right, and it could easily just end there. I think there's this cry for help mentality that we feel that once we reach a national platform that all our problems will be solved. And that's not always the case if we don't have a fundamental solution on the ground. So it's like, find the fundamental solution first. What is your priority? If you do get national attention, what's your messaging other than, hey, those people are bad, or these people are not letting us do what we want? You go deeper than that, and when you have substance, people can't fight you with, people can, if you have knowledge, people can't fight you with it. Because if you're on the side of truth and justice, then you, you'll be unstoppable, and this mosque will be built as a fact. So about a year ago, I did a, uh, a show, of, like a fundraiser for the McLean Islamic Center, uh, which is nearby, and uh, they had a lot of hard time too um, opening it because they had a lot of you know opposition, um, and the main reason why is because uh, the the mosque was in a church, so it was an old church that closed down because people weren't attending. It was down to like just a few parishioners, and uh, they left, and the church wanted to sell it. The church wanted to pan it over to the mosque, and uh, they did everything they could uh, to to like do it correctly. Like they had Christians come out and like take the cross down, right? Because they didn't want pictures of like them taking it down. They would, like go on Breitbart or whatever. And uh, but when they had that, when they yeah, it was like a poor man's Hagia Sophia. It was like a very beautiful kind of thing. So, uh, but they had these town halls, and they showed videos from the town hall at the show, and uh, there were all these Christians who came, like all these people who came who were like, did not want them to do it. And I was like, well, if you had just gone to church, then they wouldn't be closing. Uh, so like, they'll show up to protest the mosque, but they won't show up for church. I'm like, mm. um, But what was interesting, and what I think that a lot of Muslims uh, make the mistake of doing, this is true of a lot of interfaith work, is that they'll, they'll go and find the most liberal, the most willing uh, Christian organization or the Christian church in the area. Um, usually it's like Unitarians or whatever. We all, we all love the Unitarians. Um, people who uh, listen to Unitarians are not the ones who are protesting mosques. So like, so like Unitarians are like the most liberal um, denomination. So what you want to do, if you want to build bridges and stop them from doing it, find out who their pastors are, right? Find out, uh, you know, if there's a Southern Baptist convention in town, um, find them and talk to them, and because they can deal with their you know, parishioners who are, who are who are doing that, but I don't see enough, uh, I guess, outreach to um, who they would likely listen to. 
right? Because the people protesting uh, the building of mosques are not going to care if a Unitarian uh, pastor tells them to do that. But if there's a Southern Baptist pastor, maybe they will. And so, or just their pastor, find their pastor. Because pastors in general are much more liberal than their congregations. Um, and that's true across the board. And so, um, hopefully that helps. Thank you.